All right, so I did not film any of the glassing of the hull, but the whole thing is now glassed. The back end I just did, so that's still uh, in the process of curing. So we now have a nice, strong fiberglass hull. And in previous boats, uh, I did glass this a bit. You know, I used more glass, more layers than I have with previous boats. Previous boats have been you know, we've run up on rocks, not going any fast, but drifting down rivers, you know, you get hung up on rocks and stuff. And those boats have held up just fine, but uh, I did go with a little bit more on this just for the sake of it. And I can always go even more than that if I find that later versions need it, or I can just add it later if I need to. But yep, fully glassed. And you can see I'm just now starting to work on, so we have an overlap right here so we have a seam going down the center and then i did add extra glass as well just to help to be able to fare this out nice and flat so you can't see it so as the rear end is curing up which i'll show you right now so you can see i have this right in here haven't trimmed it yet um, but we have like double thick edges and everything like that so nice and strong uh, impact resistant there and so as that's curing up i'm going to start working on that seam and just overall sanding a bit of the outside of the hull because that's going to need to be done anyways but turned out really good um it was a little bit more challenging than i thought it would be but i eventually kind of got a system down and we got we got the whole thing done um but yeah that's where we're at right now and it's feeling pretty good weight it, Again, I'm not really going to know until I actually get it flipped right side up and then I'll be able to get a measurement on that weight. But so far, this is where we're at and I'm just going to keep getting at it and keep getting worked on. All right, so we got the thing flipped. All, the back is cured up. I kind of sanded the, that seam line smooth. And so now I'm starting to think about the deck. And uh, one of the things I want the option to have is to be able to mount a trolling motor up here because the whole idea is you got a trolling motor up here, uh, nice open space so you can kind of stand here, work the trolling motor and throw baits so easy to fish. And um, so I was thinking it through, and so if we're gonna have the platform in the back here, and that's where I kinda intend for all the main storage to be, so you have extra gas and a battery in one of those battery boxes. And so we gotta run wires to the battery all the way up to the front to power the motor. So I don't obviously don't want wires hanging out on the deck, so I went and picked up this uh, tube here. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but uh, I'm just going to kind of, I guess, guesstimate as I go here, uh, have it start here and kind of channel it underneath, just route it down into the deck and then have it pop out somewhere close to the bow here. And so that way you'll be able to stuff some wires and you'll be able to run power and then you'll have a nice clean area with no wires running through okay so i just took a router bit and it actually fits perfectly with this a half inch router bit i believe a half inch with the pipe here so that fits in really good so that's pretty much what i'm going to do to get this pipe down and it seems you can kind of heat up heat it up and then bend it uh to get the access points at each end and if i i probably won't be because you can't really get a full 90 degrees like that i'll probably end up cutting it just at like an off at an off angle uh, just to keep things flush so i really wish i had this all planned out but i don't so i'm just kind of guessing what will work best so i i think i'm gonna start the channel right here and then <clears throat> using this as a straight edge kind of put it have it end down there and so uh, it's off center because I, the trolling motor mount, it's gonna go somewhere here or maybe off to the side. It might be angled so you can kind of angle it up when you're running. But I think I'm gonna have it off to this side 
uh, just because I don't want to run it down the middle because this was a hard seam with glue in it. So I don't want to route through that. But I also think the battery is more or less going to end up on somewhere right in here underneath the platform because uh, it being a tiller control, you're sitting just a little bit more on this side. So a little bit will wait there, just kind of balance things out. And so this is gonna be where I start and where I finish down in there. So I, I'm just gonna do that. It might not, I might not get it perfect, but I think putting it right here is, it's gonna be in an area that's gonna work out. We'll be able to make it work. So I got the uh, wire tube just kind of hot glued tacked out on each end. And once the deck goes down, we're gonna make sure to keep this area clean. And then we're going to um, like formally put some epoxy and some filler in there to, to make it watertight. But I, I did experiment and I'm not going to do it. So this is what I thought when I said like coring out this foam to further reduce weight. I just experimented right here just with a hand drill and, and this isn't gonna happen. Um, I did some experiments I, I really just should have, in hindsight, if I could go back to when I was milling these out internally, so on the bottom side of this. So basically the the center of this would have been a honeycomb structure. Definitely a bit more intricate than this. And I, I did a test piece with just a blank piece of foam and I was able to reduce the weight by like 33% of that chunk of foam. So that would have saved a ton of weight without giving, without reducing the strength um, all that much. Because once we get these uh, composite skins on the outside of this foam, and then once we get the deck, uh, the, the wood slash composite deck on the top of this, it, it's, it's just gonna be, have all the strength it needs. And so if there is another one, I'm definitely going to core out the entire inside besides some key areas like in the back and up in the front where mounts are. And that would have reduced the weight by a lot. I, I think we could have shaved at least 20 to 25 pounds. And if it really was 33%, um, we could have shaved around 30-ish pounds off the boat. We're probably in the high 20s. But uh, so that's not going to happen. And then so now I'm going to focus on getting the deck on. So as far as the deck goes, this is some very, I think it's 3.5 or maybe it's just three millimeter, um, some plywood here. I've used this stuff before on past projects. It's really great, really strong. And so this allows us to get away with way less composite on the deck. Cause if you we were gonna go full fiberglass on the top, you'd still, the deck has to be strong, obviously. I mean, you're walking on it, things are getting slammed around on it. Um, so that's why like I'm going with this uh, wood kind of backing and then we're obviously going to fiberglass and laminate the top of it, seal it, watertight it. And then especially on the edges, that's really the most important areas is these are go going to be offset by maybe, I don't know, but they're going to be offset a good bit. And then some uh, epoxy and filler is going to come in here and we're going to fill this up and so that's going to allow us to completely seal off the edges as well as have a nice round transition onto the actual hull and so when we lay our glass down and overlapping it'll be completely sealed off so that's uh, that's the plan here and so I'm just going to cut this uh, to fit perfectly on the boat gonna probably do a, a few sections and get those seams nice and seamless and then glue it down with a posse onto the deck all right so a little bit later we got the whole deck uh, glued down and obviously taped on the edges and then we just have these temporary screws just keeping a nice pressure <clears throat> across the whole boards so went on great loving it so it is lightweight as well and so uh, what's next is once this cures up enough, these whole edges are going to get filled in with filler and then also seams and then we're going to putty up all these uh, temporary holes, address and finalize the cable runs and then we're going to sand the hell out of it, fair up the edges, give them a nice, uh, just a nice rounded, sharp rounds to it and that's the point of that filler. And 
sand it flat, make sure all the seams are, you can't even see them, and then we're gonna glass it up. So, going good, just making steady progress. All right, so, uh, cured up, tape's gone, obviously, temporary screws are removed. And so now I have this masking tape going around the whole edge here. And we so we left that little maybe quarter inch gap. And so now that's gonna get filled in solid with epoxy and filler. And then once that's cured up, obviously tape gets removed. And then we'll have a nice solid edge to be able to round onto the side of the boat. And then we'll be able to get our glass going right over that. So that's the key, especially when working with wood and um or wood cores mixed with boats is those edges you gotta like i always will solid epoxy edges um because that's where you're most prone to having issues but so with this technique that won't be a problem so i'm gonna get started on that uh because i want to get that cured and then fair i gotta wait for it to cure and then sand it smooth and then hopefully get the glass decked so hopefully before it gets too late all right so we can see that we have that epoxy thickened epoxy slash filler going all the way around the edge here and then i went in and sealed these off these are ugly as hell um i i, I guess i really i'm pretty much just winging it on these i really should have thought through a better cleaner way of doing this but uh most importantly what i was going for here was just to seal that up watertight while keeping the uh, actual tube relatively open and so once this cures up that's going to take a bit of sanding to clean up to at least a bare bone acceptable level and the rear is looking like the same thing but um, fun functionally it should be there uh, we'll work on the looks I'll have to really get in there and, and sand the hell out of that and then we got the seams. Uh, I just kind of went o went over those. Hopefully, I got some filler in there. A just to to fill them up with the seam, and then also when I go to fair this deck, I really want those to be seamless, quote unquote. I, I, you don't want to be able to see those at all. So hopefully that works out. And so now I'm just gonna. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait and do some actual other work in the meantime But wait for the secure up and then we'll pull the tape and then we'll get Sanding and then we'll get our deck glassed up. Hopefully later tonight Alrighty, so we got the deck glassed up and nice rounded on those edges and so last night I just spent a lot of time thinking of I'm not going to call them mistakes. I'm going to call them things that I could have done better. And if there's a next one, which I really hope there is, I'm definitely going to do them on the next one. And number one is the hull, when it's being machined, is going to be cored out. I think there's a lot of weight savings that can be gained there. And I think it's worth the time to do that. So number one would be to core out the hull or to honeycomb out the, uh, the core of the hull. Number two is... I should have left so you can you can see right here off the bow that we have the the deck surface and then we immediately go down into kind of that angled bow shape I should have left an inch of flat 90 degree um, surface before diving down into the shape because I was thinking of how I'm gonna mount a uh, rub rail and it's just not going to really look that great on this round on this angled surface here and the, this compound curve so that's the next thing is give a one inch band going across so that rub rail can mount really nice and look consistent the whole way and then the uh, the third thing would be back on the transom where the motor mount is I left it at straight 90 degrees because I figured I'd, I'd just get a motor mount on there and, and get that around 15 degree angle, uh, the prime angle for the motor to be mounted on. I should have just angled it already at 15 degrees. That would have made the motor mount situation a lot easier because I've been banging my head against the wall thinking of that. And I, I think the last thing, the fourth thing that would have been way, way better is I should have gone with um, 
So the fourth thing, especially since I just did the deck, that would have been a lot better, is I should have gone with the Vinicel Foam Core. Um, I, I knew of the material. I always thought it was a lot more expensive than it actually is. It would have been about 100 and hundred and fifty ish dollars to have done a deck this size with quarter inch divinacell and I think that would be a lot better mostly because it would be lighter uh, it eliminates the wood which depending on who you're talking to is, is a good thing um, and I think that that added quarter inch thickness would have been great because I could have just put it onto the deck and glued it and then just come with a router with a round over bit and just gone whoop, right across the entire hull and had a really nice consistent round over into that foam, which would have looked a lot better than, um, it, it just would have worked out better than this. I, I think this is just a little bit too sharp, but that would be a lot better looking. And um, I just think it would be a better deck material. It'd be flatter and, um, you know, you'd have to probably use a bit more composite on top of it, uh, a, th a bit of a thicker skin to make sure that it's a durable, hard deck. But five pound density divinacell, that's probably pretty hard. Um, I I've used some three pound foam before and that stuff is pretty, pretty strong. So I, I can only imagine what five pound would be. So those are the a uh, few things I thought of last night that if there's another one, those would be huge, huge improvements on future, future skiffs. So those are really the three things that I guess I've learned so far in this build, which I guess is a good thing. But uh, I'm just going to continue on with this how it is. Even though I could have made it better, I still think this is good um, as we're going here. So I'm just going to continue on.